HMS Daring, the Royal Navy's first-of-class Type 45 destroyer, is edging back toward frontline availability after a prolonged period of deep maintenance and regeneration, with crews now preparing her for sea. The shift from yard work to trial signals more than the return of a single hull, it represents a turning point for a flagship program that has wrestled with reliability shortfalls and is now banking on a comprehensive power upgrade to unlock the ship's full combat potential. After years pure side, the message is unmistakable, Daring is transitioning from engineering project back to warship, and the fleet's high-end air defense posture stands to benefit. At the heart of this comeback is the class-wide power improvement project, a methodical fix aimed at removing single points of failure across the Type 45's integrated electric propulsion. The essence of the upgrade is simple, even if the execution has been anything but, reinforce the ship's generating capacity with modern, dependable diesel generators that can shoulder hotel and mission loads without drama, complementing the gas turbines and smoothing power delivery to the mission systems. It is not a glamorous enhancement in the way a new radar or missile would be, but in practical terms it is more decisive. A destroyer that can count on abundant, stable megawatts can keep its sensors sharp, its cooling plants humming, and its combat systems fully integrated under all conditions. In an era when every new sensor mode and software patch seems to demand more electrical headroom, margin is capability. Daring's long road back underscores how invasive such work becomes once a modern warship's electric spine is opened up. Withdrawn from operational service in the late 2010s, she spent years in iterative refit, re-engining, and systems reactivation. The elapsed time exceeded her original build period, a statistic that is arresting but not, in hindsight, surprising. First-of-class ships carry the burden of discovery, and the process of unpicking real-world failure modes, engineering a robust solution, and then integrating that solution without ripple effects is painstaking. What matters now is that the destroyer has cleared the hard miles of shipyard Gantt charts and is crewing up for the phase that truly counts, sea trials. Sea trials are where engineering theory meets salt water. For daring, the proving sequence will go beyond the binary question of whether the new generators turn and the switchboards behave. Trials need to demonstrate that the ship can sustain strenuous operational profiles, high-speed transits, complex maneuvers, heavy sensor usage, combat system stress tests, without power fluctuations propagating into the mission architecture. A high-end air defense destroyer is an intricate choreography of electrons and software, if the power is clean and plentiful, radar performance is steadier, command and control systems are happier, and the ship can spin up every capability it needs without rationing. If the power is erratic, operators chase ghosts. The goal is to leave that past behind. The timing of Daring's return matters for the Royal Navy's force generation cycle. The Type 45s are the fleet's area air defense backbone, providing the long-range shield for carrier strike groups and high-value tasking. Availability gaps reverberate across the wider force, tightening escort pools and complicating commitments from the North Atlantic to the Indo-Pacific. A reliable, regenerating class leader helps reset that calculus. It also vindicates a deliberate institutional choice, fix and modernize rather than retire early and replace. New ships are years and billions away, restoring the credibility of existing high-end combatants at a fraction of the cost preserves options elsewhere, from frigate recapitalization to undersea deterrent sustainment. There is, inevitably, a human dimension that matters as much as the metal. Extended yard periods erode collective proficiency, crews rotate, muscle memory dulls. Regeneration is therefore a people program as well as an engineering one. Crewing up now initiates an intense training arc, platform safety, engineering drills, damage control, combat system integration, and the tactical workups that turn a collection of specialists into a fighting ship's company. The best test plans in the world will not carry a ship through the first chaotic minutes of a machinery casualty or the saturated air picture of a complex exercise, only a drilled crew will. The coming months will be as much about reconstituting that competence as they are about measuring shaft power and bus stability. 
Daring's journey also speaks to a broader truth about modern surface combatants, complexity cannot be wished away, only managed. Integrated electric propulsion, sprawling digital combat systems, and increasingly power-hungry sensors are the price of relevance in high-threat environments. The lesson is not to retreat from complexity but to build resilience around it, redundant generation, graceful degradation pathways, robust cooling, and disciplined software baselines. The Power Improvement Project embodies that philosophy, trading a sleek brochure story for a sturdier, more forgiving ship in the real world. Skeptics will rightly insist that proof lies beyond the breakwater. A successful trials period must be followed by sustained operational tempo without reversion to old failure modes. Transparency will matter, too, while granular day-by-day -day tallies of sea time may not be forthcoming, stakeholders will expect to see the practical evidence of a true turnaround in availability and performance. That standard is fair. Warships earn their reputations at sea, not in press releases. If Daring's revival proceeds as planned, the knock-on effects will extend well beyond her own pennant number. Sister ships working through similar upgrades will benefit from lessons learned, reducing yard time and smoothing reintegration. Carrier strike planning will have greater confidence in the escort bench. Allies contemplating their own integrated electric or high-demand sensor fits will find a case study in the value of investing early in electrical margin and reliability. And for the Royal Navy, a class once defined in headlines by propulsion trouble could reclaim the identity it was built for, world-class air defense delivered by a modern destroyer with the electrical muscle to match its sensors and weapons. For the sailors who will soon take her back to sea, that is what ultimately counts. A destroyer is a promise, a commitment to be on station, to detect early, to decide fast, and to defend the force when it matters. After a long, exacting interlude alongside, HMS Daring is finally in a position to make that promise good again. The next wake under her keel will be more than a symbol of progress, it will be the first proof that the investment in power, patience, and people has translated into operational reality.